Welcome again, everyone, to PMP training on steroids. Everything is closed down that's extra on my screen, so hopefully we won't have any more interruptions. As we were talking earlier, uh, the PMP training on steroids, the name is based on as people take steroids, they want to be able to, they want to be able to encourage their body to be, perform better, to do better. And so by doing better, what happens is then they enhance their body. Now, I see the slides are still not, oh, here they are, they're advancing now. So for those of you who are single, you're probably saying, whoa, look at this dude. So do you feel, put it in the chat, <laughs> do you think that this is good or bad? Or is it both? <laughs> Someone's with hubba, 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 hot stuff. So think about it. When you take steroids, Okay, Adrian says, I'll take it. Oh, Adrian, you're bad. So look at this. Okay, this person looks great, probably looks great in a suit, going to a club. But look at the sides. Things are happening to his body because of the steroid. So when you go or do you take your training program on a level that's just totally out of control, studying all the time, hardly getting any sleep, not eating like And balance, you tend to break down. So yeah, this looks good, but it, it, the point is, you need to be able to have a balance in all that you do. So let's talk about why, um, today we'll talk a little bit about why we're looking at steroids as a point of taking PMP exam. Um, what is holistic really about? The company that's making this presentation, presentation today to you is Management Consulting. And I'm Elaine Jackson, the CEO and owner and trainer for the company. We're going to look at some goals that some people have for getting the PMP. Because it's important. We're looking at some brain dump documentation, which um, many of you will uh, agree that it's some sort of process for memorizing lots and lots of information. You cannot just um, read it and think that it will, you will figure it out when you get into the exam. That is the worst thing that anyone can do is to study a material like PMP and assume that when they get into the exam that they will figure it out. And then we're going to look at patients that one might be preparing for the exam. We'll look at uh, some brain dumps for questions, um, PMP mock exams that are out there. And then I'm going to make an offer to some of you that are looking for training, some of you that are looking to get for the first time, or maybe for if you, you're stuck in a training school that you place the lot of money with, and now all you need is maybe a couple of documents to help get you over the edge so that you can then be ready to take your exam in the next month or so. So based on timing for this call, we're going to go about 90 minutes, maybe a little bit shy of that, but I want to give enough time for people to relax. This is a Sunday evening here in the in the um, East Coast, so just sort of relax and um, take great. Any questions, please put it into the chat. So Holistic PMC, Holistic Project Management Consulting, the name, many people, when they see the name, they say, wow, is that a gardening company or are you in pharmaceuticals? They always think it's something to do with exercise or something to do with gyms or something. So I said, no, the, the name came about with us wanting to be able to offer training that covers everything, that makes students feel very much at home, kick back your feet, you know, take off your shoes. Put your feet up on the desk, relax, do training in your pajamas if you want to. But be able to be relaxed so that you can get this information in by reading mock exams, um, uh, study techniques, brain dump sheets, all kinds of techniques that we use to try to get you, if one technique doesn't work, we try something else. But we haven't had an issue where nothing worked for any student. Um, the holistic approach is that you tell us everything that you need and what we'll do is then devise a program that's exactly tweaked to help you and then you need to then give us feedback if it's working. If you don't give us any feedback, we, 
we can push and push and push all we want, and you still won't get you where you need to be because we don't know how effective it is. Our complete training is that we take students and help them with their application. We help you if you're getting audited with a PMI. Now, we don't want to have to take a student who just got audited and they're saying, come help me, and we did not initially help them with the application. That would not be but we can take a look at um, the process and get you through it. Um, the audit must be done. I think they're giving two months, but we get our students to complete any audits that are um, issued by PMI within seven days. And the reason for that, when you send your application and you're ready to take the exam, you're done with studying, you're tired, you're like, I want to get this over with, then you get audited in the middle of that and you feel so rejected. And it's important during the time when you get audited to stay motivated, do what PMI requires you uh, to do. And PMI, as we all know, is the Project Management Institute that oversees the, the issue, the, the training um, component for the PMBOK and oversees the administration of the PMP certification exam. We make your training worry-free. Worry-free doesn't mean that you're not going to worry, but it means take most of the brunt of the worry. We tell you don't worry. So if you're trusting you, you have a trainer and you're trusting your trainer, you should be wondering, biting your nails, pacing up and down. You should be using study techniques that we have taught you and just employ them, whether it's building, studying every day, taking mock exams, doing wow, um, doing your math problems, uh, coming to the workshops, coming to classes. So if you're a student Miss classes here and there, you have a hard time grasping all the knowledge with um, the holistic PMC training system. We move fairly quickly on the advanced programs. The other programs that are for the 35 hours, we don't move as quickly, but we move with purpose, which means we know that within 8 to 10 weeks, we want to have you totally ready to feel confident that maybe another week or so you're ready to take the exam. We do not want an open-ended training that just goes on for months and months and months. You're, you cannot handle this much knowledge, holding it in your head for months without a plan. Your brain does not like that. Most brains want to know, what are you going to do with this? And how long do we have to hold on to it? And so the holistic PMC training system gets you to say, okay, as, they, as a project manager, let me be proactive and not reactive and let me plan towards getting ready for that date. When you don't set the date, that's where a lot of the anxiety comes in because you have no goal. You're just in limbo studying, and your brain has no idea when it's going to end, and that adds an anxiety that maybe you haven't targeted as an anxiety, but it is. Um, by inspiring you as students um, to, in PMP, we want to make sure that, number one, even after the training, you are still engaged with us for being reminded to keep your training uh, alive, to do PDUs, which is the um, professional development units. You want to make sure you're taking tons of training because you need 60 every three years. Now, you may be thinking, oh, three years, I can do that very quickly. There have been many people that lost their stuff because whether life happened or their job happened or they just got lazy, did absolutely not one training event with their certification uh, being lost because they did not have the PDUs to recertify. So make sure you stay in touch with me as your trainer. If it even if you're you don't you decide okay I don't she's kind of intense and I'm afraid of her. Some students tell me that they're afraid of me. I, I can't even imagine why. But anyway. Um, so you, maybe you feel the program is too intense and you want something easier. I'm not sure something easier is the way to go, but if you still wanted to stay, I have over 3,000 contacts on LinkedIn. Love to add you to that listing to keep you informed on what's going on, not so much for PMP, but for everything related to project management. So as a trainer for project managers, if you say to me, I need to get this PMP by February 13th because I want to go out on my Valentine's date and feel happy about my PMP, all I need to know is a date and a time when you want this to happen and with blinders on, heading down the road, getting you there. Now, sometimes, as sometimes you have ambitions, 
drive, or maybe you need to take vitamins, or maybe you need to take steroids to get yourself going. And the steroids I'm talking about is maybe doing some motivational statements that you say to yourself every morning, like, I deserve to be a PMP. I've worked hard as a the certification because of. If you have a reason why you want the certification, it makes it a little easier and a little nicer uh, transition for you to go after it. If you don't have a reason because you want it for the money, it's going to be kind of hard when you get it and then you get into situations with other trainers who are take other project managers who are taking this uh, this field very seriously. It could cause you some some uh, reason cause for problems or grief. So let's look at this. This looks like sometime what's going on in some people's heads. Let me minimize the screen a little bit so you can see the titles here. Sometimes as you take on all this knowledge, all that stuff is in your head and you're getting all kinds of feelings and sometimes you let it run you over or you become overwhelmed with it. With Holistic PMC, we encourage you to take back the control. You have to keep the control of the exam, your, your study process, any anxieties that you have, your pace of the exam, you are in control. The more you're in control of how you study, when you study, how long you study, the more you control all of that, the more you control the pace at which you answer questions. When you go into the exam, you go in with that same command of and, and your pace of anxiety. And when you do that, you have a better chance of passing the exam. You know, as you're studying, you're going to find you're taking many, many, many tests. You go into take the exam. You have this out of body experience that we call it, where you forget. You become like almost like one with the computer. Um, and the in the testing center, you're so busy working on the test, you forget where you are. And for one a moment or so, your brain feels like you're back doing tests every day, every other day. Some days, twice a day. We're talking hours and hours and hours of testing. So your brain feels like back home and we're going to get up and go to the refrigerator and get some orange juice or something in a few minutes. And you look up, you're like, what? You just this feeling of losing where you are, your place in time, because you're so much in, in concentrated on what you're doing. So in order to control that, you need to figure out techniques that work for you, whether it is looking up every few moments, looking at the clock to time how fast you're going, it, that is so important. You should never be taking it and you're getting ready to answer the next question and then the test closes down because you're now out of time. It, it, and students have come to me and said, you know, I ran out of time. And I'm like, I'm so glad some of my students are not in my same town because I'd have to go to their house and say, why did you let that happen? How could you? You should have been watching that clock. Any other question, looking at the clock, measuring, am I on pace? Am I ahead of pace? Am I behind my pace? What do I need to do to catch up? Do I need to go to the bathroom? Do I, am I hungry? Do I need to get up and stretch my arm? It's a whole behavior that we talk about when we talk about testing behaviors that you need to take. And some of the tips that I'm sharing with you and on this recording is to encourage you to make sure that you're not just reading the book and saying that's that. It's more than just reading the book. It's about your testing behaviors, your to endure, even when you, you don't want to. Do we answer a couple more questions before you go to the men's room or the ladies' room? Huh? You need to answer to those needs because your body, your brain is working. When your brain works, the brain is an organ. And when that organ is really hard, you get very hungry. So if you notice that you're hungry, it's nothing wrong with you. You're just doing a lot of studying, and you need to feed yourself healthy food. Talking potato chips. I'm not talking cheese doodles and sodas and things with a lot of high sugar. I'm talking healthy, healthy foods and getting enough rest, but not so much rest that you sleep the day and you wake up and you say, gee, I should have studied, but I really love my pillow. I don't want to hear those kinds of things from my here. Wow, I, I really put it in. I studied long hours and now I'm going to take a break. Today's Sunday. I'm going to watch some football. Great, watch some football. But you should not be watching football all day long and then come nighttime, you're like, now I'll open the pin box. 
Now I'll do some reading. That's not the way to go. Okay? So let's look at the brain. We looked at the brain when it had so much stuff in there. And, uh, and when you look here at this brain, it looks really organized. I sort of like to think my brain is really organized like this, you know. I'm sure it is nothing like this. For the amount of input that I keep cramming in there, I'm sure, I'm sure my brain <laughs> has a hard time with being this organized. This was created for me by a, a graphic designer, and I wanted to have each of the little areas of the brain with all of the little inputs, outputs, tools, and techniques from the processes. Um, that would have cost me quite a bit. So they chose to do something a little bit different. So one of the original documents of this showed for integration, and the big blocks are the knowledge areas. So we now have 10 knowledge areas. We have five process groups and 47 processes. And within the 47 processes, each of those processes have inputs, outputs, tools, uh, tools and techniques. So if you did a high-level view of this diagram, it would be everything that you need to pass the PMP exam. And so could, I, could you look at this and pass the exam? No. Well, this is just another way of saying, how can I, how can I make sure that I'm, okay, staying on track? So let's use this as an example. Integration. Do I know everything from integration? Let me go into the pin box. Let me go into some of the other books. Um, Okay, so someone says this, this, the slides are not changing. What slide are you guys seeing? What are you seeing right now? Are you seeing a slide that says PMP brain, brain document? Let me just see something. Um, I just now changed to the brain document. Okay, there is seems to be a delay. So I'm not going to change any of the slides fast. And when I change the slide, you can just comment that, oh, I see the new slide. So with this slide, again, we're looking at 10 knowledge areas, five process groups, and 47 processes. So in the new PMBOK 5th edition, page 61 gives an overview of how the knowledge areas and the process groups interact and where the processes are within that whole matrix. It is so important to take your time in the earlier stages of your to really get a good grasp of what's happening in terms of project management, life cycle, um, organizational structure, in terms of governance, in terms of project life cycle and product life um, product life. Cycle. You want to be able, you want to be able to understand the foundations because every chapter builds on the next chapter. So move to the next slide. So this next slide actually shows this next slide actually shows I know what's happening. I'm not in slide mode. Very good. This should be better. You guys should see this now a little bit better. Is this a little bit better for you? Excellent. Thank you. Sorry about that. You see the slide? The slide. This guy is going up a very steep ladder. So this represents in the very beginning. In the very beginning, you are your the information is pretty much okay. I mean, it's like stepping on marshmallows. If I can. And give it some kind of an analogy of how the as you, if you were to look at it as a progressive as you progressively move through the PMBOK and other related materials. I say other related materials because you cannot be reading the fifth edition PMBOK and go get an old book from another. Everything that you read should be aligned with the fifth edition PMBOK in order for you to gather as much to pass the PMP exam. Now you can use older books if you're using it for reference on what kinds of tools and techniques are out there, how to get a chart or how to build a WBS structure, how to what I should I put in a risk register, what should I put in a stakeholder document, or if I'm doing a matrix, what is that about procurement? But if you want to pass the exam, you really need all the updated material. When the book changes, you can bet that they are going to put the new stuff on the new exam. If you were 
a company like PMI and you change you change the exam, why would you not put the new stuff on the new exam? So you should be thinking like a business. If they change the exam, chances are really good. They are going to have a lot of the question areas that have changed and that are new and asking you those kinds of questions on the exam. So in the beginning, it seems easy. You know, everybody's having fun. So in our training, fun, we make jokes, we keep going. Um, we're very focused and professional, but I try to make it as much fun as possible because this information is dry. It may not be dry at work. There's a lot of tension and issues, but in the class, in the classes, we try to bring in examples of what people do in their workplace, what tools they use. But if you notice, if you have studied for PMP before, you'll notice after you got to chapter four, integration, you're like, oh, I don't think I'm doing so good. I'm going to go back down to the bottom. So I'm right now a writing a blog on why is chutes and ladders, just that little kid's game where, well, they call it snakes and something else, but if you play this board game and you start to go up to the top, but if you hit a certain marker, you just slide all the way. And this is what happens in PMP studying. You get to chapter four and you hit scope, you're like, I don't think so. And you go all the way back to the bottom and you start you know, studying the ethics and looking at the life cycle processes and you come up. Oh, I don't think so. People have been doing that for years. I've had somebody tell me for 15 years she's been planning to get the PMP. What could I say? I couldn't say, I, I can try to help you, but I need to know your level of commitment. Because for someone to keep waiting 15 years, and then their manager is going to let you go, and now they're like, I need my PMP. You needed that PMP 15 years ago, so that conversation from your manager less of an impact or maybe it would never have happened. So as you get up into scope and time and cost, quality, there's more in, there's more involved, but it also feeds off of the information coming from the lower um, knowledge areas. And so when you get up to human resources and communications, those are easy chapters because it's related to things you have actually experienced. In place. Then we get into the real heavy duty stuff of risk and procurement, which are very chapters in terms of volume of information. And it's also hefty information in terms of the um, amount of information and the intensity of the information. So I try when we cover those chapters that those are the only things we do so we time on it, answer a lot of questions, do some reference, and be able to understand the material the accelerated classes, I expect students to do a lot of the work on their own, which means I shouldn't have to hold your hand, but so much. We cover the material, you ask questions, we go over a lot of material, techniques, study techniques, then I step back and give you some time. So it's almost like when birds, a little bird is getting ready to fly, the bird says, okay, everybody out the nest. You have to try and make this on your own. I cannot come into the testing center with you. Some people told me that they hear my voice as they're taking their exam. That's kind of creepy, but it's okay, just as long as it works. Just as long as they hear me say, you better not come home without that PMP. That's what I want. That's what I'm talking about. I want to know that people are so not intimidated by me, but motivated to see, uh, to be able to uh, say, I need to make this happen for myself. Not for me but you need to make it happen for yourself so that you can then have some goals to get the PMP. And that's another thing, planning what's going to happen. What Start to dream about what that day, what does that day look like on the way to the exam? You're happy. When I took my exam, the day I can remember yesterday, it was a day, it had rained, and it was sunny, but yet not really warm. Sunny, the, it was almost like the heavens opened up and all of the light rays from the sun was just paving the road, taking me right to the prometric. The temperature, everything around me, I felt like I was in a bubble. I felt so good. I felt so confident. I felt ready. I felt like all the sun and this was my day and it was going to happen. I had no doubt that I was not going to come if I didn't have that PMP. No, I didn't have a plan of what I would do if I didn't pass. 
And during the exam, I was like at one point five minutes behind schedule. I have no idea to today how that happened. But it happens by a few seconds here, there, six minutes here, little by little, little inches of time. And when you look up, you're like, behind schedule, oh my God, I'm not going to pass this exam. So you need to have a plan in place. What are you going to do if you're behind schedule? So one of the documents sending uh, all those who have attended our call today is a free document on PMP trivia. What are you going to do? If this happens, what are you going to do? You know, you need to have a backup plan. As project managers, you need to have it in your hip pocket. What are you going to do? What if you get or you feel ill and you have to end up going to the bathroom every half an hour? Well, then you'd have to decide how you're going to manage that. You know, do you need to have the abysmal in your locker so in case that happens? If you get a headache, have the, the uh, pills in your locker. So someone recently told me that they are not allowing people to go in back into the lockers. So that's really a concern. Um, that's really a concern because if somebody needs medication. So if you take medication or you have issues where you need to get something out of that locker, please make sure um, please make sure that you tell the people at the Prometric Center. You need to be allowed to get whatever it is that you need. And if you have issues where you need, uh, if you need your glasses, they should be with you. You know, they, if you need a tissue, they will give it to you. But you can't take your pocketbook and all of that in there with you. Okay? So let's move along. If you have any questions, please put it into the chat. I'd love to hear it. Um, I'd love to see where, what it, whatever concerns you guys may have. We are now on a slide that has a, a lady opening a pill bottle. And this slide talks about sick and tired and tired and sick. Now, we've all heard this. We've all uh, been around the block a couple of times. We know what it's like to be so sick and tired of studying, wanting the career success, wanting the options that are available out there. And every time you turn around, somebody less qualified gets the job at Bly because they have the PMP. They get the job opportunity, they get the job interview, they get the recognition, and you're like, wait a minute, that person doesn't even do project manager like I do. I'm the one that's been, they always come to me for the answers. They always come to me for help. And now here it is, they're getting promoted and I'm sitting here. So it's time to equal the playing field or level the playing field. What's happening, and I just did a recording on my blog talk radio show, um, a guy has a, I think he has four certifications plus a master's, and he's working on some other master's degree and working on another certification. What he talked about was having that competitive edge, that if you have all of these certifications, it says something to the employer. Now, if the employer is someone of low self-esteem and they feel uncomfortable with someone like you, then you probably don't want to work with a person like that. But if it is that you want to be seen as a leader in your field, if you want to be seen as someone that should be considered for promotions and for positions working with great-minded people, then you need to kick it up. It's not good enough to say, I have a high school diploma. High school diploma days are over. Community college days, uh, that's, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that you cannot be successful if you only have a high school diploma or if you only have a community college degree. There are many rich people that have very limited education, but it's all how you use what you have. You've been dealt cards, so now you play your cards in the right order. Once you lay down some cards, you can't pick them back up and put them in your hand. So try to make sure that you make wise choices on your coaches, your training um, process, the training schools that you use uh, on the web. If you decide I'm going to go and look for more tests, I'm going to go look for a trainer. If you're looking for a trainer, if you have one right here, but if you're looking for someone that's going to sugarcoat the information and lie to you and tell you it's okay, don't worry about it, you don't have to study. I had a student two weeks ago tell me someone told him, oh, don't worry about all those formulas, you can just skip over them. Oh, no. There are more formulas that you need to be responsible for, and they're all listed between the PMBOK and some of the other PMP books out there. They are listed. So, no, look at this. You are fired. I don't know, even know if they fire people anymore. I think what they do is work you to death, and then you just sort of slither out the door grateful that you got out with your life, you know? Um, nobody wants to feel like they're not wanted or that they, they're not needed. 
So by equaling the playing field and knowing the companies that are hiring and staying on the, on the, on the cutting edge of moving around, you can't sit and say, I want to stay here for 30 years and then retire. Retirement is, may not be an option. There are people living longer. So if you retire, what are you going to do? Watch TV? No, you need to stay productive. You need to stay on the cutting edge of what's going on so that you can be productive as long as possible. So I'm looking at this, some of you may be thinking, whoa, this is heavy, you know? I mean, some people would rather die and go to hell than take that PMP exam again. And, and so if that's true, why are you not studying like that? Why are you not studying like, oh my God, I don't want to, I don't want to have to take, nobody wants to have to turn around and go to hell. And so, and nobody really wants to take that exam again. So the solution is, don't even consider either of those. Consider a proper study process. Making sure you give yourself enough time. If someone came to me today and said, oh, I want to, I want to study with you and I want to take the exam by the 31st. Well, today is the 11th. If they have never studied project management before, for me, it is really hard to bring a student from zero to 100 in a short period of time. Because usually what's driving that is that, oh my God, my job is going away and I need to move quickly. So now they, they're driven by fear. And so when someone's fearful or they're being intimidated to, to, to move and do something that they normally would not have done, they don't study well. They're like, can you, can, is there a faster way to get this information in? I did a training in Philadelphia and someone actually threatened me because he said that he didn't want to read the book and that I was to help him get that information in his head without him reading it. Well, I mean, I'm never going to play God, but I know that if you don't read the material, you don't take the time to read each knowledge area, read each paragraph, break down each piece of information and then, like a computer, place that information in your head where it makes sense. If you can't do that, there's no way I can, I can move down and move into your house with you. And no matter what I do, it will not make a difference. You can go and hire the most expensive trainer, but if you don't make a commitment to your own study process, it, there's, it's game over. You need, to, you need to step up your game as a student and be able to take it to the next level and use your coach to your best advantage. Here are some positions that I just picked up off the web. It was sent to me from a source. So if you know someone or you're thinking of moving to Austin, Texas, these are positions um, offering $68 to $83 um, dollars per hour. So you can do the math. It's a contract. You see it's 18 months. You can see it's a contract position. Now you may be saying, well, could I make more than that as a project manager? You definitely could. Look at going to New York. Uh, look at coming to Massachusetts. The pay scale is much higher in some of the big, bigger city areas. Maybe even Houston and Dallas might pay more than Austin, Texas. Although Austin, Texas is supposed to be an upcoming area. Um, lots of uh, great things happening technology-wise. So the reason I show this and this other position is to tell you that the jobs are out there, but they're requiring PMP. They're requiring a lot of technology uh, based uh, knowledge, based background and knowledge. But the best way to get into any of these kind of positions is to, number one, get an insider person that says, hey, I'll take your resume to the hiring manager. So even if you don't have these skills, and from what I'm being told, that men more likely would see a position, don't have any of the skills and say, I'm going to apply for it. And then women turn around and say, oh, I don't have any, I think I'm going to not apply. So I guess maybe in that way we should be, try to all aspire to be as a, assertive as men and say, look, I like that job I want and I think I'm going to go after it. And if you have the right connections, you get past the gatekeepers and then now you can start to prove yourself. But without the PMP, that's a little bit of a challenge. And, and after you get the PMP, as you stay connected with me, you're going to find that you're going to say, I'm going to say to you, what's your next certification? What are you doing next? Not so much that I'm going to sell you the next certification, but I want to make sure that you don't come to me and tell me 
a year, two years from now, you know, the PMP didn't do me any good, and now I'm out of the mar job market, and now I'm too old to get a job. I don't want to hear that kind of conversation. I want to hear, oh, I'm working on my IDLE certification. I'm working on uh, Agile. I'm working, I'm a scrum master. I, I'm getting the, the green project management certification. I want to hear that you are moving along because that encourages me to believe that I did the right thing in encouraging you to be a project manager. Here are some nasty words that we should try not to say. You need to move it from your dictionary. We're talking about things like, oops, that was my hand going crazy here. Won't, I can't, I'm going to fail. I can't do it. No, never. Oh my God, I can't. It's just too much. I don't, those are nasty words. Those are words that really tell me that you, you, you've you almost given up. You don't want to give up. These are not words that you should be even thinking about because once it comes in that it's too heavy, I can't handle this load, or I have a headache. I mean, when students come to me and say, I have a headache, I turn and say, well, is there a CVS in your town? They're like, well, yeah. I'm like, well, then go get something. <laughs> go get something. I don't want to hear that you have a headache. Uh, your arm fall, your arm got cut off, go to the emergency room, get it bandaged up, keep going. You have to keep going. This is an exam that once you start studying, it once you stop, you go back to the beginning, just like that shoots and letters. So you cannot afford to study and then say, you know, it's too much, I'm going to take a break. Because the next time you pick up the book, it will be like a new language, and you'll have to start from page one all over again. Let me just... So let's look at some of the positive words. You want to say, I can do it. I will. I'm planning. I want to. I'm scheduled to take my exam. I'm organized. My materials. Here's my brain dump. I want to eliminate waste. I'm spending too much time in certain areas. I need to spend time on the areas that really give me problems on the exam. You need to keep saying positive affirmations. What I had done when I was studying, and some of my other students have done that too, is go on the web, get a copy of a certificate. So I think somewhere someone has a certificate. Um, I don't want to post mine out on the web because I think that's room for someone to copy it, put their name in it, and now they have a certificate with a number and a signature. So I don't want to take that kind of risk. But I, somebody had posted there. I printed it out and posted it around my house. So it sounds silly. Yeah, why would she do that? I, every day I was looking at the certificate, and I kept saying, oh, my God, that's my certificate. I could actually smell the ink on the paper. That's how much I wanted that PMP. And what was so wonderful is that I got PMP certified one day before I was let go from my company. So the, I get into work the next day, and I'm walking around smiling. I can't take the smile off my face. I'm like, oh, my God, can something bad happen so I can stop smiling? I was so happy for two weeks. My face hurt. I'm like, good God, something. I was just so happy. Strangers were smiling at me. I'm like, why are they smiling at me? And someone said, that's because you're smiling. I'm like, oh, I guess I had never smiled at strangers before. So, so it's important to realize that once you pass the exam and then you get the job of your dream, it's off whole game changer. Everything changes and then you start to say, wow, this is what it feels like to feel successful, to, f to feel the fruits of your labor from having worked so hard, you get this status, you go after this job, all doors start to open. Now, I'm not going to say because you get your PMP that you will get every single job you go after. That's not true. But it, what it means is that what it means is that you now have a way to open doors. Now there are some other techniques you will be needing to employ to get to those jobs. But once you have some of the keys and some of the solutions now is to work on the next level of getting those doors open. So right now the slide that you should be seeing says it's a yellow slide, yellow and white, and it says mock test. So those of you who have not taken any mock tests, a mock test is not a copy of the previous exam or exams that people came out and shared with people. These are exams that people have made up. Now, you know, it's only for so many ways you can chop up the, the English language. So, but people have come up with test questions. So on LinkedIn, there's a lot of people posting questions every day and having discussions. 
some of the people posting questions should not be posting questions because they're looking at project management from a different angle and coming up with their own spin. So be careful when you go on these little chat groups and people are discussing stuff. Look to see who's making comments and the rebuttal that's come from people who have a couple of years behind them in this field and what they're saying. If they say, where did you get that from? That's inaccurate, then you know, okay, this may not be a source for you to be following. Why do you do mock exams? Um, when you, uh, I don't know if any of you, are any of you familiar with Carnegie Hall in New York? Carnegie Hall, Cami Hall. These are, uh, there's a Lincoln, the Avery Center in New York. These are places where when they have huge, big, uh, concerts for pianists and symphony orchestras. This is like the, the place that these people get to go and play. It's like, wow, I've made it, I've made it. So when people say, well, I want to get to Carnegie Hall, I want to really do a good performance there, um, they say, well, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. And that's the same thing you want to do for this mock exam is that you want the, the studying for the PMP is you want to be able to practice the exam. Practice how, your behaviors. Practice how do you feel you've been sitting too long. What are you going to do if you've been sitting too long? So one of the documents that we share is talking about what, if you, what are you going to do if you've been sitting there for a while and now your eyes are blanking out. You can't stay focused. Your, your, your bum is getting numb. Or you have to go to the bathroom or you... you want to go to the bathroom, but you're, you're, you're answering a question, and you need to give it another two minutes. So the thing is, you need to listen to all of the signals, whether it's the test, whether it's your body, whether it's the, the little snakes in your head that tells you, no, you're not going to do it today. You've got to push those things aside and stay focused. I had a student that took the exam in Chicago many, many years ago. And uh, the heating, the cooling system broke down. It was in the summer, and they did not let anyone leave the building. Everybody was sweating in there, and the heating system is connected with a water system, so the toilets didn't work. So they didn't let any of them go to the bathroom or go out of the building. And he was like, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I had to go to the men's room. He says, I just started filling in and clicking, clicking right through the whole test. And he passed the exam. So I'm very happy that he did because... Had he not, I would have understood, but I'm just a little surprised that under the complete stress of having to go to the men's room, being overheated and dehydrated, that somebody could actually pass the PMP exam. And for me, as I study behaviors of my students, I always look to see how can you, under the most extreme conditions, be able to survive. Like when there's an earthquake, and you see in some third world countries, there's somebody like in Haiti, somebody had a can of Coca-Cola, and they made it last a week. Um, I don't think that would really happen in the United States. I think if something happened catastrophic, like within an hour, the people would just give up and die. But in, if you notice, in third world countries, people, they just like find them a week, two weeks later under all the rubble that they're still alive. I, just, I find that totally fascinating, totally. So you may be thinking, okay, how many mock exams do I need to take? You take, you take as many as it takes. I'm not going to say take only 10 and you'll be ready. What if you're not ready at 10 and you're ready at 12 and you stop at 10? You've done a disservice to yourself. So pace yourself. You're not looking for how many. You're looking for what are the results. How fast are you doing the exam? If you've done 20 exams and your scores are still in the low 60s, uh, 70s, 40s, 50s, oh, no, you're probably doing too many exams. You're doing it too fast. You're not taking the time to understand those questions that you've answered. Why did you answer them wrong? What's wrong with your knowledge? Did you go and read, go back and read on those areas of why that information you're answering the questions wrong? If it is each test you take, should you should see yourself getting better, answering questions more completely, more accurately, and faster. If that's not happening, then you need to go back to basics and maybe read chapter one through four again. Maybe that's what's needed. But no matter what, you need to make sure that you are progressing. There should not, if you get stuck, then check with your coach. Check with me. You know, I'm willing to do a one-hour session for those who are not my clients to say, okay, let me see how I can fix up your study process and get you on your way. Maybe you don't need to come into a program. Maybe you just need a motivational 
chat, you know, go in the huddle like in football and hoo ha ha and okay, there you go. And get you on your way. But the bottom line, you need whatever it is that you need, you need to make sure that you get it so that you don't fail the exam and have to say, Wow, I failed the exam, now I have to pay again, go sit for the exam again, study again. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, and I like to think that we are creatures that say if somebody walked on the beach and they fell in the quicksand, that you don't have to go there and see if maybe it won't happen to you. You know it happened, so it can happen to others, it can happen to you. So you may be thinking, when am I ready for this exam? You're ready when you're ready. You should be focused on setting a date, and as you get closer to your readiness, and that's based on your scores and how quickly you're answering questions, how much you know, based on looking in the back of the pen box and looking to see in the appendix, okay, how much of it do I know? Okay, check. Use, it, use the appendix like a checklist. And as you go through each topic, do you know it? If you don't know some topics, that shows those are the areas where there are gaps. You need to find the gaps and you need to close those. Okay. So here, let's look at this question. I refuse to, at this point, go to the outside of the go-to meeting because we'll have some integrity issues. And I want to try to keep this, co this call going as nicely as I can. So this is from GoCertified.com, an awesome test source. After you finish the call tonight, and those of you who listen to the recording, take the time to go to this site and just do the 20 questions for the first test. There are like three tests in there. So let's look at this question. Which of the following provides the foundation for team development? In the chat, could you please put, and for those of you at home, sort of write down on a piece of paper, what do you feel, A, B, C, or D? Is it motivation? Is it organizational development? Is it conflict management? Or is it individual development? So first of all, what knowledge area do you feel we're talking about here? And then which is the right answer? Can you guys see the slides? Okay, so someone said A, so you think motivation is the foundation for team development. Okay, and what knowledge area are we talking about? Okay, great, somebody said HR, that's excellent, that's excellent. So I do know, because I've done this test about 50 times, I tend to uh, go through stress with my students. I do the test also. So I've done this test quite a few times, um, and, and it, it, the answer is not motivation. The answer is actually D, individual development. It comes from the HR segment, and it's listed in the in PM. Yes, a, yes, um, it is D. It comes in P in the PMBOK that talks about in order for the team to be developed, the individuals need to be trained properly. So that they, if the individuals are developed properly, then they can actually participate in the team. If you don't give someone training and they come on the job, maybe you hired your cousin and they are really, I don't know, let's say a bus driver and you bring them in on the project and they're trying to learn project management while doing project management, they don't have the training. They don't have what it takes to be part of the team. So then people on the team turn around and have to help them. Oh, could you help me? Could you help with Microsoft Project? What's Microsoft Project? How do I do this? How do I turn on the PC? I mean, all of that. So if you motivate your team, uh, the individual people, when you integrate them into the team, that they can actually be uh, productive with the team. Let's look at question number 16 again in Go Certify. This area, tell me which knowledge area. I'll let you read it on your own. Which knowledge area? And what is the answer?
Okay, the knowledge area is risk management. That's great. Okay. And so one of you said that the answer is A, contingency reserves. So when, and I want to acknowledge that that is the right answer. The contingency reserves are for risks that you know that are going to happen. So during execution of identified risks, so this is a risk event that you knew was going to happen, but you didn't really know when, and so here it is, it occurred. And so you account for those risk events that you know are going to happen by using contingency reserves. The management reserves are for the unknown unknown. The contingency reserves are for the known unknowns. This, is, this information is also in the PMBOK and in some of the other PMP books. I'm not mentioning any other books. Number one, they didn't give me any uh, royalties for mentioning their name on a recording. But also, if it is that you're looking for names of books that you could study from, <coughs> it's, in, it's in the proposals that I send my, my clients that are considering working with us. Uh, or if you decide you'd like to have a one-hour consult with me, I can share with you some names of additional mock tests and books that you can use if you're a person that likes to do training on your own. Let's look at this question number nine. And this source is uh, 100 questions. 100 questions, 100qns.com. Um, this is an awesome source of questions. You can buy some extra 100 question tests for $9.99 $9 or something. Very nice people. I've talked with them. So let's work on this problem. What would be your approach? What do you think this knowledge area is dealing with? And what would be your approach to answering this question? You can write it in the chat, the knowledge area, and then um, just let me know if you're working on the question. I'm going to go through it with you in a second. Okay. So if somebody put in the chat that it's um, cost, um, PERT, it's dealing with the PERT, but I think it's more, um, it's not so much cost, but time. Because you're looking at the time it takes to commute, the time it takes the most likely. So you remember that PERT comes with cost. There was one with a little P and one with a little C. So I think this one is uh, with, with a little T for time. I think this is PERT related to time management. And so how would you calculate the, come up with the answer? If you haven't done project management training, you may not know the PERT formula. The PERT formula is P, which is pessimistic, that's the worst case scenario, plus the most likely, four times the most likely, plus the optimistic, which is the best case scenario, divided by six. P plus four times the most likely, plus O divided by six. So what is the P? What is the pessimistic value that we're looking at here? It says most days your commute to work takes one hour, 10 minutes. So I would tend to think that one hour, 10 minutes is most days. That would be your most likely. What do you guys think? Okay, so someone says yes. So what is one hour, 10 minutes? What does that really translate into? Right, 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 70 minutes. Because if you notice, the others are in terms of, you need to you need to normalize all of the terms. One says one hour, 10 minutes. The next one says 50 minutes. The last one says two hours. So you need to have them all talk about minutes, or you need to have them all related to hours, or you need to have them all related to seconds. It's kind of hard to look at them in different terms and be able to add them into the formula, okay? So if that the most likely is seven, what is the uh, optimistic, which is the best case scenario? I'm going to move this screen so I can see a little bit. It says there are some occasions when you've reached work in 50 minutes, 
So the 50 is less than the, and the case where you're, the traffic is heavy, that would make you late. So now you're at two hours. So what is the optimistic? Optimistic is the best case scenario, which the number is lower. Okay. Um, and the uh, pessimistic is the other number. No, um, the answer that I see in the chat is one hour, 15 minutes. Um, you're a little bit off on your number. Somebody else got that number, too, and I'm not sure. I think you divided by three. You probably used the triangular. It says using triangular. Interesting. It says using triangular distribution, but I think the answer is supposed to be a different answer. Anybody else want to chime in? So what, what numbers are you using? Using 70, 50, and are you using 120? Is your pessimistic 120? 120 plus 4 times 70 plus 50 divided by 6. Not by 6. Triangular is by 3. So, the, so when you do PERT, as a matter of fact, triangular is not four times. The triangular is just P plus O. P plus M plus O divided by three. That's triangular. Check your book. Tri remember, I think you keep getting this one mixed up. Pessimistic plus, mo plus most likely plus optimistic divided by three. But if they ask for beta, that would be the P plus four times the most likely plus optimistic divided by six. So you got, the point is you got the numbers right, but I think added 4 divided by 6, you need to do the triangle, it says using triangular distribution, so you're just going to add the three numbers and divide by 3. Are you getting 1 hour 20 minutes? Is everybody on the call following a little bit on this map? Don't get overwhelmed if you haven't seen this sort of stuff before. This is some of the math. What we do is help you to understand, okay, this is a word problem. So when you see a word problem, understand what they're asking you. See if you have all the pieces and then line up the problem. It's like doing a puzzle. Think of it, try to think of a lot of this information in a user-friendly way. And if you do that, it will be much easier to get to the answer. So I think I may have taken you down the wrong road by talking about PERC calculations, but the bottom line, the triangle of distribution is um, dividing by three. So make sure you go to Jimbach and you go to Go Certify if you have time after this session is over to look at some of those, um, to look at some of those test questions and become a little more familiar with what's it going to be expected for you on the exam. Is this exactly like the exam? No, but the human, the, not the human language, but the English language is only but so diverse. So it's going to be something similar. So you need to get comfortable with a lot of different exams so that you don't have to say, oh, I only take tests from certain providers so that I know that uh, I am uh, able to pass the exam. You need to be able to see questions from no matter what source and be able to sit in your seat and say, okay, I can do this. So let's look at some of the free offers because I'd like for you to either share this information with um, your teams at work for people who are studying for their PMP, to share this with maybe some of uh, your friends that are studying to see if you want to get a group together, or if you're looking for extra documentation or additional help. The first two documents will be sent out either later this evening or tomorrow um, as we get a chance to send it out. We had a couple of people on the call this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to make sure that I uh, totally acknowledge those that have taken the time to come onto the call with them. Though we really do appreciate their time and, and their interest in project management. Some of the, and I'll talk a little bit about the PMP trivia. That's the document that says, if this happens, what would you do? So we just go through about maybe 25 to 30 different scenarios on if certain things happen, what are you going to do? Um, and if you have a backup plan on what you're going to do, believe me, it'll take away a lot of the stress of what's going to happen to you during the exam. You go in there armed with no matter what's going to happen, I have a plan. Um, the do's and don'ts behaviors just before your exam, 
this is a document that talks about what to do a, a week before your exam, uh, the day before your exam, the night of your exam, the morning before the exam. Things can happen. And so what, what you should be thinking of, what you need to do, um, make sure you have your driver's license, make sure you have, you pack a lunch the night before, make sure you go to the, the Prometric Center. There's a long list of things you should be doing. You don't need to do any of it, but it will actually remove a lot of the anxiety related to how do I get to the Prometric Center? What if I get there and I find I have to park and I needed cash for the meters? And the, you know, it's just a billion things starts to run through your head. If you've looked and covered all these bases, you don't have to think about that. All you're doing is studying and being ready to, <coughs> excuse me, for your exam. <coughs> excuse me. Um, brain dump uh, preparation slides. You need a really robust brain dump documents. I don't care if it's a thousand pages, but you need pages of information that you've taken and created to make sure it's friendly, user friendly for your brain. So we teach you how to go about making documents that are related, <coughs> excuse me, to your studying rather than to a brain dump that you purchase off the web. Techniques on how to memorize page 61 of the PMBOK, really, really, really important because that's the basis for how you're going to start to memorize and connect all of the information. Any particular question you should immediately know, <coughs> you should immediately know what knowledge area, what process group, where are we in the life cycle of the project, and then be able to drill down to get to the right answer quickly, very quickly. And so by doing this memorization process, you're lining up all of the information in your head so that you can then quickly get to the right answers. The PMP math workshop, this is a four-hour workshop that we have with our students or people that have signed up only for the workshop. Um, these slides are available if you would like to have those slides so that you can then add it to your arsenal of information for studying. Um, a two-hour exam review a review just before your exam day. Maybe you're getting the jitters, you're taking your exam uh, February 1st, you're like, oh my God, I just need somebody to just be on my side to say you can do it or motivate you for uh, and going over network diagrams, earn value calculations, procurement formulas. There's certain pockets of information, HR theories. There's a lot in every knowledge area. There's pockets of information that you need to get under your control and what we can do is work with you to remind you of what you should be doing. Um, we also offer free hour one, assess one hour assessment of your PMP study documents. Maybe you're using the wrong stuff. A lot of people have gotten books from friends, oh I used this and they used it four years ago. How useful is that? So making sure your documents are right for this current exam. Or maybe even doing a one hour consult to help you on certain exam topics like procurement or risk or uh, human resources. Um, so here are, these are our special offers and we wanted to leave this screen up to see and to see if you have any questions that you can put into the chat at this time to capture any questions that might be of interest to you. I do have some questions that some people had sent in earlier to be part of the meeting. There, we were expecting a few more people to come in, and so I checked my smartphone, and they actually stated they had a change in plans, but they were still hoping to get the recording. So one of the questions someone asked was, do I really need to read the PMBOK in order to pass the exam? So I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you think? Based on all the information I just shared, do you feel you need to read the PMBOK? You can put it in the chat. Put your answers in the chat. Definitely. Absolutely, yes. So, you know, don't look for cut ways to, if you were going to become a doctor, would you want to just, like, get the degree, but you didn't know where, how to do surgery, or you didn't know how to give an injection, or you didn't know how to do an examination? This is part of your craft. This is part of the basis for you moving your career to the next level. So why would you not want to put the time in? Why would you not want to finesse your career and get it as robust? And, because you will be challenged when you go on projects. People will say, where did you get that from? I've never done that before. So you really need to be on top of your game. Uh, what books are really good 
somebody asked, what books are really, really good to use for studying for the exam? Well, you know you need the PIMBA. There are a couple of others out there um, that I can recommend. So if you want to take this offline, I'll share with you some books that might help you. The bottom line, if your test, is, let's say your test is in another week and a half, I would suggest if you've had enough books that you're using, do not buy a whole lot of books. Don't go buy more, more books. You're only going to complicate the process. Too. Now you have to integrate all of that new information and, and check it against what you already have. You may not have that kind of time. And the fact that you lack the time will add an element of anxiety to your process. Reduce the anxiety by reducing all the extra sources. Um, and I can go with, over with you if you like to have a one-hour assessment of some of the processes that you'd like to uh, go through to achieve your PMP. The bottom line is try not to complicate it. This is as complicated as it needs to be, and you don't need to throw any elements in it to make it more complicated. Someone asked, how many hours should I be studying? Well, I would say the first thing you need to do is to get buy-in from your family, your, even your kids. As little as a little kid two years old, I have a little granddaughter, and I say, Nana is studying. Shh. So you get them to the point where they know, okay, the door is closed, the pink the pink towel is hanging on the door, or there's a note that says, shh, that you get people to the point that they respect your time. If you get them to respect your time, when you're studying, they will not come and ask you, could you get me a soda? Could you please uh, go to the grocery store and get some beer for us? We're getting ready to have a football, a football uh, a tailgate party or something. Your study time is your time, and if you make people respect that by putting that time on the calendar, then you will do much better in terms of people saying, oh, I checked her calendar, she's busy. It doesn't matter what you're doing, you're busy. You wouldn't have put time and blocked it out if you were if you were available. The fact that you blocked it out means you are not available. If it is you want study time at work, you may have to take your lunch and eat it in your car while you study. If that's what it takes, you may have to go to the ladies' room and go in one of the stalls and sit there pretending you're using the bathroom but doing some studying in the bathroom, whatever it takes. You need to be willing to push the envelope and get a little studying done in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon, on the weekend, on the holiday. You're going on vacation. Take something like a Kindle with the pin box downloaded to it. You know, so excuses. When people make excuses, I just look at them with my mouth open like, really? Really, you're coming to me with excuses, but you want your career to move. And the whole industry, if you notice, the industry is just taking off. So you've got to pick up your game to try and stay with pace, or if you slow down, everybody will pass you and leave you where you are. Oh, here's the last question. I have not been in school for a long time. I'm uh, older than most of the other students, and I have a hard time in classes. What should I expect? Age is really not a factor. Um, uh, Martin Luther King, when you look at Gandhi, they, they were not young men when they became, came into their own. So you need to not use age as a factor. Use it to your advantage. You have more life experience. Use that experience to your advantage and then tailor your time. If it is that you get tired and you need a certain amount of sleep, then get your sleep. But when you are awake, use your time wisely. Do not use your time to, you know, go going out, go shopping, walking around at the mall. You should be home studying for your exam. You know, when people come and tell me, oh, you know, I have to take my grandson to his baseball game. But, yeah, at the baseball game, you didn't take any books to read or you didn't take something on a, a smartphone to go answer a couple of PMP questions. I mean, there's always pockets of time where you can actually do something. So excuses. If you really want this PMP, it is there. You can get it, and you don't have to retake the exam or fail the exam and spend more money. Go with the right approach, and you will be able to pass your exam. So I'd like to open up the floor to anyone that has any questions. I think we're at the end, almost to the end of our presentation. This is a salary. Um, I will send the presentation out to everyone. I meant to make a bit.ly slide of this, but I sort of ran out of time, so I'll do that before I send it on to you guys. But this is uh, ESI, which is a uh, learning institute 
very prestigious learning institute. They didn't pay me to mention them, but I wanted to mention the survey, and I couldn't mention the survey without giving them credit. But this is a survey from 2013 that talks about salary from project managers. So I think this might add some value and encourage you along the way. So the bottom line is let's try to get that PMP in 2014. The sooner you get it done, the more you can then plan for other things for the later part, the summer, the spring, summer, and the fall of 2014. Don't let 2014 get away from you and then PMI announced that they're going to change the exam again. I really don't know how many more changes are coming. Um, I am connected through the community of practice for scheduling, but I don't have privy to some of that information that people want to know when the next exam is changing. But why sit and wonder when it's changing when within a few short weeks you could be ready, up and ready, and get your exam accomplished. So here are our contact information. Definitely, when you get these slides, share them with your coworkers, with your uh, friends that you know are studying. If you were in a study group and you know some people that are still not achieving their PMP, uh, forward this out. If you have connections in Massachusetts, we have an initiative uh, to help some companies get training for their employees. So make sure you connect with me to give me those names. And I have an uh, affiliate referral program that will pay for referrals. So let me know if you're interested in that also. Okay. So if we have no more questions, it has been a wonderful pleasure. And look at that. We're finishing right on time. What a project manager I am, huh? <laughs> Any last questions? But at one last uh, uh, open for questions, going once, going twice. Well, everyone, it's been a pleasure having you in the, on the call, PMP uh, training on steroids. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that some information I shared tonight will help transition you to the next level. You're very, very, very welcome. Thank you. Happy New Year, and have a great week ahead. All right. Bye-bye.